Well, good morning, Transparent Church and guests. This is a day the Lord has made. Hey, we're so glad that you logged on. Let me just say happy August to you. Today is the first, and we're so glad that you decided to log on and join us for service. We thank God for you being here with us. And I just want to jump in today uh, with a word to get us started. The 30th number of Psalms, New Living Translation, reads as follows. The first part says, verse 1, I will extol you, O Lord, for you rescued me. You refused to let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave, O Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night. But joy comes with the morning. That's good news. That's, that's Psalms 30, verses 1 through 5. We're started, And so I want you to know that his favor lasts for a lifetime. You maybe have been in a situation where you had a frustrating week, but I can't even tell you God's favor is still resting and residing on us. Let's pray. Gear your hearts and your minds for worship and the word now. Let's turn to the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the week that you brought us through and the new month that you brought us into. We thank you for every challenge and every hill and every mountain. We thank you that we still have a mind to worship and, a still, and we still have a mind to praise. And so we invoke your presence in this place today, asking that you would take charge and control of the service. God, move over the airways so that we continue to, God, bring your word in this worship encounter to the people here and at home. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do this day and this week and this month. We pray your covering, God, over this land and country and this world. God, that you continue to heal and touch those who, God, have been challenged with this Delta virus and this coronavirus and this economic plight we've been in. We thank you, God, that you are still moving and healing. And so I pray a special prayer for the Household of Faith Church today. Uh, my friend, Apostle uh, God, Morris and his wife lost their daughter. I pray for them. And uh, Minister Patrick lost his brother at that same ministry. So we just ask you to comfort and give them grace right now in the name of Jesus. We lift up Sister Javicia, her and God, touch and heal her body. We thank you for Sister Crystal, God, as she's getting closer, God, to the new addition to her family and our church family. We just pray, God, that you would touch. Touch my mother this morning, God. Continue to heal her and touch her. My father as well, my father-in-law, all who need a touch. We come today, God, believing that you're going to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could have asked or thing. And we simply summarize this prayer by simply asking you to have your way in our hearts, in our homes, and in this place. For it's in the mighty, majestic, marvelous name of Jesus the Christ we pray and we say amen and amen. Now, I know you're at home. I know you may be by yourself or with family members, but put those hands together and just tell God thank you. I don't care what the situation is. I want you to know that Jesus is real. Praise team's going to back it up with a song. Come on, praise team. Let's let them know that Jesus is real. Everybody ought to know this song right here. Let's praise God and worship him. Yeah. In the way we know how, and that's with songs, Lord. We lifted your name high. Here we go. Jesus is real. One more. 
time. I'm telling the truth. Jesus is real. Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real. Tell me he's real. I'm telling the truth. I know that he's real. Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real. No one around. Jesus is a friend that I find. I know. Oh, yeah. Jesus is real. Oh, I can feel him in my head. I can feel him in my head. In my feet. Feel him in my feet. Hey, I know the Lord will take good care of me. Oh, I know. Hey, I know. Hey, 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 yeah. 
a real. Oh, yes, he's a real. How many of y'all believe he's real? In the morning, he's real. In the noon, he's real. Oh, yes, he's a real. Oh, your deathbed, he's a real. When you can't sleep at night, he's real. When no money in your pocket, he's real. Oh, yes, he's real. Hey, they hug him high. They stress him wide. He hug his head. Oh, yes, he's a real. Say, yeah. Come on, put your hands together if you know he's real. I can feel him in my hands and feel him in my feet. Feel him all over me. Good morning, good morning, good morning. He's real. Thank you, praise team. Well, good morning again, Transparent Church. They sound like they want to have church with us today. Bless God. We hear your claps at home. Good morning, virtual congregation. Good morning, virtual ushers, and to our guests and members of the Transparent Church. It is a great day to be alive. I want to just welcome you again into our service and hope and pray that you're having a great and prosperous start of a new month and start of a new week. And so with that being said, I just have a few observations and announcements, and I promise I'll get out of your hair as we move forward in the service. But this uh, being the first week of the month, first day of the month, first Wednesday, we will not have Bible study this week. We will resume our Bible study starting the second week in August. So get ready, get ready, get ready. Praise God. I want to say to you also, for those of you who have children getting ready to go back to school, we're praying for you as well and preparing uh, to, to continue to cover you in prayer. I don't know, many are starting this week, some next week and, and thereafter, but we are praying for you and looking forward to our TC kids coming together virtual here real soon. Uh, with that being said, I also want to let you know, if you would love to be a part of our virtual congregation, please send us an email at info at the transparent church dot org and just type in the subject line virtual congregation. We will send you an invite. Do that by Thursday of this week. We'd love to see you on the screens. Uh, with our virtual congregation to see your lovely faces until we're able to come back face to face and we will continue as we move forward. With that being said, I uh, just want to remind you that we're back in August and we're going to be moving forward with our third Monday night prayer as well. So govern yourselves according. Uh, in addition to that, hey, if you're watching us for the very first time, I've got good news for you. We make it very easy and accessible for you to find out what's happening at the Transparent Church. We have an app with you just in mind. So if you don't have the app, if you're watching for the first time, and even if you're a member and you still don't have our app, we want you to download it. It's free for you to do so. Whether you have an iPhone, an Android device, or an Amazon Fire tablet, you can find the Transparent Church in the iTunes Store, also in the Google Play Store, as well as on Amazon. And you can uh, find out what's happening with our church, keep up with our announcements. You can even watch our service. Some of you may be watching from the app uh, right now. And you can also click the Give button to support the mission, vision, and the work of this church. I uh, also want to let you know that we have updated our website as well. Uh, we've been upgrading all through COVID. And so if you've not been on in a while, go check it out. Uh, we also have a, a means for you to connect with us on the website. So if you have prayer requests, you can submit those through the app. But you can also submit them through our website as well. 
And so we thank God for that and just want to let you know that we are appreciative of you being a part of our church. We want to do our very best to make it as easy and as seamless as possible for you to continue to meet with us and to worship with us until we come back face to face. So continue to pray with us and for us. Amen. Uh, with that being said, I just want to shout out now to our August birthday babies and our August anniversaries, a happy birthday and an anniversary. So would you join me in saying happy birthday in advance to Akira Pittman, who will celebrate a birthday on the 3rd. Happy birthday to you, one of our virtual members all the way in California. And then also on the 3rd, Sister Mackenzie Young will be celebrating, Lord willing, another birthday. Happy birthday, Sister Mackenzie. And then Brother Dr. Elton Briggs on the 8th. Happy birthday, Brother Briggs, to you. Followed by Sister Gloria Johnson on the 12th. Happy birthday, Sister Gloria. And then Sister Mari Ross on the 16th. Happy birthday to you, Sister Mari. And then followed by on the 18th, Brother Michael Johnson Jr. Happy birthday in advance, Brother Michael. And we're going to round out the month with our very own Sister Dana Rhodes. Happy birthday in advance, Sister Dana. We're all so thankful to God that we have an anniversary we're celebrating this month. So would y'all help me say happy anniversary in advance to Brother DeMonte and Sister Kelsey Jackson, who will celebrate, I believe, if I got it right, five years on the 13th. Come on, give it up for the Jacksons. Happy anniversary in advance. And if you're a member and you have a birthday or an anniversary and I've somehow, we somehow overlook you, please charge it to our head and not our hearts. We'll reach out to our virtual ushers and send us the information at info at the Transparent Church. We'll make sure we get you a shout out for the next Sunday and the rest of this month. With that being said, it is time now for us to share our mission and vision. I don't know about you, but it, it helps me to be reminded why we exist every week in the form of our mission and then the form of our vision speaking to where we believe God is taking us. So would you say it with us? I know you're at home, but I want you to say it so we can hear it and you can hear it. First of all, our mission. Let's say it here together. The mission of the Transparent Church is to introduce the lost to Christ, invest in the lives of all mankind, and involve people in the work of ministry through effective leadership and teaching and now our vision to be a ministry where people can receive a clear view of Christ by creating a diverse environment that engages and fosters fellowship. We are people who are transparent with our God, transparent with each other, and transparent with ourselves. Transparent will be the clear choice for continual growth in a cutting-edge ministry. The people of God said, amen, amen. Well, you ready for some more worship and then the word? Put your hands together and let the praise team hear you as they come back and share with us that it's the Lord. He alone is worthy of our praise. And we're going to give him all of our worship. Come on, worship with us this morning. Bless the Lord today. God, we worship and we bless your name. We glorify you. Honor you today. We lift you up on high, Lord God. We praise your name for you and you alone are worthy of all of the praise, all of the honor and the glory. So we lift you today in spirit and in truth. If he's done anything for you at home, stand up on your feet with us and lift your hands toward heaven and just begin to tell him how good he is, how wonderful he is, how marvelous he is. We thank you, Lord. We honor you today, Father. Fill this place with your presence, God. We glorify your name, Jesus. We honor you today, God, in everything that we do. We will praise you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Come on, y'all. Listen. Say that one more time. Let's sing it again, y'all. Here's my worship. 
my worship. Here's my worship. All of my, all of my worship. Receive, receive my worship. All of my, all of my worship. All right, if you take it back to the top, come on. You, Lord. If he's worthy to you, singing at home with us. And no one, no one can worship you for me. Tell him for all of the things that you've done for me, God. For all the things you've done for me. And no one, no one can worship you. We're going to move in harmony right here, y'all. Come on. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Here's my worship.
give you glory to the what you did, Jesus, to the who you are, Lord. Ah uh. 
perfect God but here's my worship receive my worship all of my all of my worship still working on some things God but here's my worship here's my worship got some battles I'm still all fighting through worship. until I get the breakthrough I'm still going to give receive you my worship. my worship you're watching me you may be going through but don't you stop giving all God of my worship. your worship your worship to God says, God, you're worth it. You may have adversaries and you may have challenges on the forefront, but when you think about God and his goodness and who he is, I promise it'll make things better if you just worship. Sometimes the worship is a sacrifice. But go ahead and make the sacrifice because he's worth it. Receive my worship, all of my worship. Because he's worth it. That's why I can't be silent. And I will not be silent. I will always worship. I'm not the best singer, but I made up my mind. I will not be silent. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as I am breathing. Father, we thank you now. Thank you, Jesus. For you being so awesome. For you being so altogether wonderful and lovely. For you loving us enough to enable and allow us to be in your family by faith. So we thank you for everything that you've done. We thank you in advance for everything that you shall do. We thank you for your word because it is at the entrance of your word that we receive life and light. And so, God, I pray that in the moments that I have with your children that you would illuminate our hearts and our minds, that we might receive what you would have to share with us today. Make the hearts and minds receptive, God, so that we would be bettered by our being in this place. So much so, God, I ask that you allow me to adequately articulate the truths found in your word so that in all of our getting, we gain a level of understanding. So in spite of what I've prepared and planned, I ask that you simply have your way, but do it in such a manner, God, that we walk away knowing your instruction and then your assignment for us in Jesus' name. And I ask and pray that you help me to be honest and transparent with myself, with these your children, and with you, my maker and my redeemer. Now let the words of my mouth, now let the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are strength and you are redeemer. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh. Good morning, good morning, good morning. For the Lord is good. Yes. And his mercy endureth forever and ever and ever and ever. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So glad that you are watching today with us. And thanking God for his hand being on your life and our lives and in the midst 
of our circumstances and our situations, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We know God is with us through it all. And so we're so thankful to him for being with us. Uh, as I unpack today what I believe uh, I'm supposed to share, I want you to know that I have been praying for you, Transparent Church, and praying for your families and your children, and praying for you who are going to work, and you who are looking for work, you who have been sick, you who have been uh, going through transition, because it seems like the, the longer God blesses us with life, it seems like it just keeps adding one thing after another. But I want to just start by letting us know that we are built for this because God's hand is on our lives. I think he left us around for such a time as this. And so be not dismayed or discouraged for God is still with us. It doesn't always feel like it. it doesn't always look like it. it. Doesn't always seem like it. But I need to let someone know that God is with you and God is with us. And since he is with you and since he is with us, we might as well not wait till the battle is over, but shout right now. We don't have to wait to see if COVID's going to fall off the planet. We can just praise him while we're waiting to put on our mask and waiting to get shots and waiting for boosters. Whatever the case is, God is in control. And then as much as he's in control, sometimes life looks like it's out of control. Um, and I'm saying this to you because uh, I keep saying, because it's so true, everybody's saying it, that we're going through a lot. But just because we're going through a lot, that doesn't mean that we should stop our praise and our pursuit to God. Because I believe if we continue to pursue and pray to God, He's going to bring us through. But sometimes even in our pursuing God, we have the tendency to get tired. We don't talk about it a lot. Matter of fact, you're starting to hear more buzz around life and how difficult it is. Even the best of the best, and many of you have seen this week, um, a lot of talk, you've heard a lot of talk, you've seen scenarios where some of the world's greatest athletes, like Simone Biles, just simply said, I, I can't compete right now. I got a lot on my mind. And, and you know, it's, it's time for us to realize that we have to be mindful of what's going on with our minds. We have to be mindful of, of realizing that what we go through if we're not careful, can get to us in ways that we never thought or imagined. I know she's not by herself, but there's some of us who, who went through some things and you just didn't realize that it started to drain you a little bit. Do I have a witness? And so you have to work hard to maintain your walk so that you are not drained. I, I want to talk for a few moments um, from Psalms 27. Turn there because... I know that the psalmist David understood what it looked like to deal with a lot, yet in favor and in faith with God, knowing how to handle the ups as well as the downs. Let me just clue you in for some of you who believe that Christians only get the ups. You're sadly mistaken. <laughs> Sometimes we get more of the downs just because God reminds us that he can deliver. And so I want to direct your attention. I, I'm not going to read the entire psalm. Uh, I'm going to read verse 13 through 14. One of my favorite, I, I even shudder to say favorite. I have so many favorite. Because when you start tasting, you, you'll see what the psalmist says as well. When you start to taste and see that the Lord is good, you'll have many favorites. But for the sake of time, I want to spend uh, the majority of my time in this 13th and 14th verse of this 27th number of Psalms, it reads as follows. Some of you already know it. You don't have to turn, but I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. I'll quote the King James as well. It says, it says there, David does, yet I am confident 
I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. 14, wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. The people of God said amen. Uh, King James would said like this, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. For a few moments, I want to just talk from this subject, faith not to faint. Faith not to faint. Theologians have different opinions related to the timing of this text. Some suggest that because of how it is written and what David was going through, that it was written earlier in his life. But when you study others, they begin to believe that it was written much later in his life because he goes through transition in the text, speaking to the faithfulness of God and speaking to the relationship that God has that secures one who believes in God. And whether you're on any either end of believing he wrote this when he was younger, pre-palace, or you believe he wrote it later, post-palace, in either event, the message that he has in this passage rings true. There are some things that jump out. There is a theme of faithfulness and consistency backed with courage. Because David shares with us that you need all three of those in order to remain faithful to the fight of faith. I shared with you a moment ago that many of us believe that as we become Christians, that our problems magically disappear. But rather, I submit to you that, and I have evidence in the Word of God that lets us know that our problems don't disappear. Rather, we just have a a way to tap into the problem solver like never before. If anyone knew about dealing with problems in various positions, it's David. David knew how to handle it when he wasn't in a position of power, when he was skipping and dancing as a shepherd boy, taking care and tending sheep, only to find himself be anointed but not appointed until many years later. He knew how to handle and behave himself. You, you, if you studied his life in First Samuel and even the Chronicles, you'd understand there's a phrase that speaks of, the Bible speaks of related to David. It would go like this. Not only was the Lord with David, but David behaved himself wisely. And, and I want you to understand that if you and I are going to remain faith-filled, to have faith not to faint, we must walk wisely. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean walk wisely? To walk wisely, I think, it means that you don't handle the highs too high and you don't let the lows take you too low. Because what will happen when you allow the highs to get you too high, you'll start believing your own press and get impressed with yourself instead of impressed by the grace and the goodness and the mercy of God. And if you handle the lows too low, you'll start to live in a place of depression. You'll live in a place where you begin to doubt God. You'll live in a place to where you have the tendency to forfeit the promises, not because God is not faithful, but because you're frustrated. So I'm talking today from the subject, faith not to faint. David said, you know, I I knew how to fight. I won battles. I had victories. But I would have fainted. He says, yet New Living Translation 13, I am confident I will see the goodness of the Lord while I am 
here in the land of the living. I love the way the New Living, or the King James brother says it as well. I would have fainted. David says that there were times that even the fighter wanted to faint. And I just want to know, do I have any believers who've been faithful and you've been faithfully fighting the battles that you have faced? You didn't run from them, but you began to face the battles, but you almost fainted. Not because God wasn't with you, but let's just be honest, sometimes we almost faint because it takes and expends a lot of energy out of us to do the will and the work and to walk like God's called us to. You don't have to say, hey, man, I know me and David are right about that. Because oftentimes we have to deal with the dilemmas and the situations that we are facing with and we're faced rather with in life. David understood this. David says, understand, I'm the same fella who fought Goliath. I'm the same fella who fought the Philistines. I'm the same fella who fought for everything I got. I didn't just have things handed in my lap because God loved me, but he said for some things I got, I had to fight. But even though I had to fight, guess what? I would have fainted. He's saying, I almost came to the point to where I forfeited what I was having faith for, but I didn't. I almost, I want to know, is there anybody watching me today? You haven't thrown in the towel, but you're close. You're, you're almost at the point to where you're not going to go back to that job on Monday. You're almost at the point to where you're about to faint. You're in the relationship, but you've got one foot in, and truth of the matter, you've got one foot out. You're working on your exit strategy because you're about to faint. You're smiling, but folk don't know you're about to faint. And David says, I know how to fight. David says, God has been with me. David says, I'm not even afraid of any enemies. Even if 10,000 come around me, I know he's going to encamp around me with his angels. But I still almost, have you ever known the word, Sister Krim, and preached the word and sang the word, but still almost fainted. I almost, he says, gave up. Threw in the tile and said, this is it. I, I can't handle any more. When COVID hit, some folks said, I almost gave up. When the economy crashed, other folks said, you can have it now. But some of us know what it's like to say, God brought me through this, that, and the other. And yes, if I were honest, I almost fainted. But something kept me from faltering. Something kept me from falling. You have to be mindful that when we are on assignment by the Lord, we will have attacks from the enemies, but we will also have a lot of things thrown our way called distractions. I'm saying this because if you're like me in this season in which we're seeing ourselves, there have been a whole lot of distractions coming our way. And if you're not careful, and if I'm not careful, distractions can derail us from what we know we're supposed to do and from whom we know we're supposed to be. And they will cause us to think about fainting. Distractions and derailments come our way to cause us to move off of the place and space that God has for us. They come to make us question whether or not God loves us and if he's still faithful to us so that we begin to question whether or not God is with us. We begin to question whether or not God's going to do for us what he said he was going to do for us and through us. It begins to boggle our mindset when we know that in addition to dealing with our emotional, our physical, and also understanding that we have environmental issues that we have to deal with psychologically, that it causes us the temptation to faint. But David says, I know what that feels like, but I got good news. You can make it. On top of all that, you do know you have enemies. Notice what Jesus says uh, to Peter in Luke 22, 32, and 31. Going into 32, he says, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. He said he's going to come after you. He didn't give him a word to say because you had the revelation of who I was when no other disciple could say thou art the Christ. You said it. Here's what I got you to need you to know, brother Peter. Simon, Simon, rather, Satan has desired to take you out. But he said, I prayed for you. 
But get this, he didn't just pray that Simon wouldn't fall, but he prayed that Simon's faith would not fail. Good God Almighty. That's what I came to tell you, transparent. I've been praying that your faith fail not. I've been praying that as you keep walking with God, God keeps showing you he's trustworthy. God keeps showing you that like David, you and I would have fainted unless we had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 22, 32, Luke says it like this, New Living Translation, but I have pleaded in prayer for you. I like that. Jesus says, Simon, you're going to run into trouble, but I have pleaded in prayer. I've been praying for you. I know you're going to fail, but your failure is not going to be final. I need to tell somebody, you may have fell, fallen in 2021. You may have a failure on your record, but the good news I have starting out is that failure is not always final. Am I talking to anyone who would have fainted, but you realize that failure is not final? Am I talking to anyone who you can say, I'm tired, and if one more thing hit me, I don't know how I'm going to handle it. I came to tell you, you can't faint. You got to have the faith not to faint. That's why Paul says it like this in Galatians 6 and 9. You know it. Let us not be weary, King James Version, in doing well, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we faint not. New Living Translation says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. Do you not know you can get tired of doing what is good? especially if you don't always see good return on the good that you do. Let me just do a check. Have you ever done good to somebody and they didn't even have the decency to say thank you? <laughs> it makes you want to stop doing good. Maybe you're the one who fasted and prayed for somebody when they went through, but when you went through, you couldn't get a call to you. They couldn't pray for you. You loaned them money, but when you needed a loan, you didn't have anybody to lend. Um, okay. Doing good can tear and wear you down. The living says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just, oh, help me, Lord, the right time we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up, i.e., or faint. So Pastor James, how, how, how can I keep myself from fainting? Because honestly, sometimes... When I'm honest with myself, God, and others, I feel like fainting. I love that song Eddie Kang sang, Five Heartbeats. I feel like going on. Swang, I still got it. But if I'm honest with you, sometimes I don't feel like going home. Sometimes I feel like going home. You ever felt like taking your ball and just calling it quits? Because you get tired and, and, and you want to faint. David says, I, I understand it. He says, I would have fainted. Can you imagine the second king of Israel, after all God had done for him, after all the ways God had blessed him, he recognizes that he had the propensity to faint and fall. He says, I, even I, would have fainted. I thought about quitting. David, who was anointed, there was no question whether or not he was anointed. He was anointed with his hands for war and his heart to play. He was anointed, but even, get this, the anointed get tired sometimes. Oh, help me preach, Lord. He's anointed. Some of you may be watching and you're anointed, but you're anointed, but you're also annoyed. Because on the one hand, you say, how can I be this anointed and this annoyed? Let me help you, because when you get tired. You get tired of always being the one doing the right thing. 
You get tired trying to follow after the way of the Lord when the world seems like they want to do their own thing and it seems like they're prospering in their way. You get tired when you do good and you don't always get good coming back to you. You get tired of folk having an attitude. It's bad enough you got to wear masks and we got to have vaccines. You, it's bad enough. Okay. Even church folk make you tired. Good God Almighty. But, but that's why you got to understand David shares with us that you and I have to have the faith not to faint. You got to make up in your mind and in your heart that I'm going to run on all the way to see what God has for me. David says, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So I want to share real quick, uh, as quick as I can, three fundamentals to standing in faith and not fainting. Three fundamentals to standing in faith and not fainting, and I'll be out of your hair. The first fundamental I want to share with you related to standing in faith and not fainting. Notice what David says in verse 13. David says, King James Version, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord, not when I'm dead and old, because church folk were good about singing, preaching, shouting about heaven, but we're not as excited about living here on earth. And I get it, I get it, I get it, David. Because sometimes when you look at how bad things are, it makes you want to say, I'm going home to be with Jesus one day. But David says, here's the first fundamental, and it's what I want to share with you, it's focus. Notice David says, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. David says, let me give you a clue. Come here real quick. Let me share something with you. The reason I didn't faint is because I had the right focus. He says, I wasn't focused on my enemies. I knew I had them, but I didn't focus on them. He says, I didn't focus on my situation. I knew sometimes it was tough. I was running from cave to cave. I had the king I blessed try to kill me. But I didn't faint. And the reason why, because I didn't give my focus to all the enemy was doing. I knew it was happening, but I kept my eyes on the windshield and not the rearview mirror. He says, I saw stuff around me, but I was like a racehorse. I had blinders on. I knew stuff was going on my left and my right, but I kept my eyes on the Lord and what God promised me. He says, I would have fainted unless I had believed. Here it is to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Notice what he says in the passage. He begins to let us know, starting with verse 1, that we don't have to be afraid of enemies or adversaries. He goes down and begins to talk to himself and ask himself questions about why should I fret? Why should I be terrified? Even if I have enemies come against me, God and his angels are going to protect me. Then he goes forward to tell us that one thing, here it is, focus. Have I desired of the Lord? And that one thing will I I seek. He's saying, I'm not seeking. I'm not gazing. I'm not focused on my problems or the people who are pursuing me, but I'm focused on pursuing God because number one, I know he has a promise, and number two, I know he has a plan. And more than that, number three, I know he loves me, and I love him. He says in the same psalm, he says, even if my mother and father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. David says, if you're going to have the faith not to faint. You have to have focus. David says, I have the faith and the focus on what God promised and who God is as opposed to where I am and what I'm going through. I want to ask you a question. Where is your focus in August 2021? Are you focused on the virus? And sometimes, I'm going to be honest, I have to turn off the news. I, I'm trying to use wisdom, and I'm trying to hear how we should maneuver. But sometimes enough is enough, and I have to go to God. I don't need to hear ABC, CNN. Sometimes I need to stop and say, G-O-D, talk to me. Help me understand what I'm supposed to do and where I'm supposed to go. Help me to focus. Here it is on the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let me ask you a secondary question. Have you packed up your promise? 
promises because of a pandemic or your current problems? Do you still have the focus to have the faith not to faint? Because if you don't, I came to talk to you. I came to tell you that God wants to give you your focus back. The problem right now and the reason you're thinking about fainting is that all you're focused on is fainting. Have you ever been there? You get one problem, but instead of talking to God about it, you start now looking for other problems. So now what happens, you start to count your burdens. This happened, and then that happened, and then that happened. Oh, I'm having a bad day, and now look up, I'm having a bad month, and now look up, I'm having a bad year. But if you stop counting your burdens and start to count your blessings, it helps with your focus. Because even if I have a problem, I start trying to focus on the fact that I still have a promise in spite of a problem and in spite of a pandemic. Somebody needs to hear me. What will happen is if you have your focus just on the situation, you won't have any hope, any joy, any faith for the promise. I still believe God's going to do some things in this ministry, in my life, with my family. It may not look like it right now, but I came to tell you it's a good day to fix your focus. Matter of fact, that's a good place to type in the chat. Fix your focus. If you're in here with me, just look at somebody. Don't touch them. Just tell them, fix your focus. Are you focused on your adversary? Or are you focused on the anointed one? Are you focused on your problems? Or are you focused on your promise? Truth of the matter, your activity will dictate where your attention is. If you are not moving toward what God promised, it's a good sign that you have been parked dealing with your pain, wondering how much worse will it get. Well, let me help you. I don't know how much worse it'll get, but I do know the Lord tells me every day he gets sweeter and and sweeter and sweeter. And if you ever want to keep yourself from fainting and to have faith, you got to have something to fix your focus on. The Bible was said like this in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, not tomorrow, not yesterday, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In other words, you got to have some hope in order to have some faith. But you got to have focus. David says, my focus was not on my enemies. Notice what he said as well. He's saying it's implied in the text. My focus is not even on my feelings. Good God, I got to park for half a minute. Some of us, the reason that we cannot celebrate and we cannot hang on to have the faith not to faint is because we're in our feelings. Mm -hmm. Folk who are in their feelings have a tendency to faint. Because you're more concerned about how you feel instead of where God wants your focus. Let me help you. I've learned to have a default. Every time First Lady asks me, how you feel? I change it to say I'm bad or good. I just say it don't matter. Why? Because I'm not moved by my feelings. I'm moved by faith in God. I'm moved by what God has promised. And if you ever get a promise from the Lord, it'll give you the faith not to faint. And the reason so many folks are fainting, even the very elect in this day, is that they've lost their focus. They forgot what God promised. They forgot what God showed. They're all in their feelings. You ever work with somebody all in their feelings? You ever been related to folk all in their feelings? You got to walk on eggshells because the least little thing you say can turn them off. But if you ever stop walking by your feelings and focus on what God promised, you can have not a bad day but a better day because you understand if God said it, you ain't got to agree. I just believe it. Come on, give God some praise right there. Help me preach and just tell yourself, don't even fool with your neighbor. Tell yourself, I'm getting my focus back. I almost fainted. I would have fainted. I felt like fainting. I didn't feel like being here. But when I thought about what God was going to do, not when I'm dead, but while I'm still alive, I got my focus. You got to have focus so you don't faint. It's all a trick of the enemy. He wants you to get in your feelings, Brother Melvin. So you don't have a desire to move in the direction God is calling because you don't feel like it. Oh, can I help you real quick? This is, I didn't even have these downloads in the notes, so don't try to put them on the screen. But God just told me to tell some of you the reason you ain't got blessed is because you all in your feelings. You got to feel a certain way. Well, you, you can't just live in your feelings. Abraham, Abraham and Sarah, didn't, they felt like they were too old to have a child. God, I don't care about your feeling. What did I promise? 
Am I talking to anybody who, who's been all in your feelings? I don't know how long it's going to take. Why, why are you not going to bless me? David said, I would have fainted. I felt like it, but I kept holding on to the promise God gave me. I kept holding on to see the goodness of the Lord in the land. I believed he was going to do it before I die. Good God. Do I have anyone else who believes he's going to do it before you die? But you got to fix Number one fundamental, your focus. What are you focused on? Some of us, some, some, some of you, I won't say us, I'm fixing my focus. You, you put the promise God had for you in your file cabinet because you your feelings. Feelings, whoa, whoa, feelings. Here's the first download I want to share with you. Faith keeps you from fainting. That, that's the major message David and I want to share with you today is simply this. Faith keeps you from fainting. David said, I wanted to. I felt like it. it. Can I help you? Sometimes it makes sense to your mind to quit. But when you have the right focus, your faith will keep you from fainting. Mm -hmm. Some of you don't even have any sense a reason from the world's perspective to be in church or watching church because your situations and your feelings are contrary to a promise. But I came to tell you, faith keeps you from fainting. And faith always cannot be explained, but it is experience. Help me preach and tell your neighbor, don't touch them, just tell them, you got to walk this thing out. It's a step of faith. Sometimes I want to quit. Sometimes I want to stop. And sometimes I don't feel like it. But, but it ain't about your feelings. It's about your focus. And if you, if you fix, let me say it right. If you fix your focus, watch out and don't be surprised if your feelings don't change. Okay, let me come on home. If you stop focusing on all her negative points... Perhaps your feelings, okay, about that wife will change if you, fo okay. I tell folk all the time, if you look hard enough on anybody, and in at anybody, you can find something good and something bad. It's all about what you focused on. Good God Almighty. Do you have any fire left? If you don't, I want to ask you, what are you focused on? Some of you are tired and, and you don't know you're close to your breakthrough, but, but you don't believe God for the land and the living. And so So I just brought some extra batteries in my pocket in case the enemy tried to lose my power. So I got some backup. I was focusing. So when you focus, you know challenges are going to come. When you focus, you know there's going to be attack. But when you have your focus, you can still fight. Come on, help me preach and tell your neighbor. You got to get out of your feelings and you got to fight for this. David said, I would have fainted, but, but I got out of my feelings and I started focusing on the promise. What did God tell you he was going to do? What did God show you he was going to make you? Who did God tell you he was going to call you to be? Get out of your feelings and, 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 and focus. David said, the reason I didn't give up is because I kept believing I was going to go up. Good God Almighty. You ever had some folk ask you, why are you still believing for that? You got to tell them, this is my blessing. This is my promise. And you may not understand it, but I'm not going to let you and your doubt cause me to disbelieve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I could ever ask for or think. He's got that kind of power packed into his promise. And so sometimes you got to get over your feelings. Sometimes you got to say, it don't even matter how I feel. That's the first fundamental. Second fundamental, uh, look at the text. David said, uh, I, I would have fainted. I thought about fainting. Tried to talk myself into quitting. He said, I would have fainted 
unless I had believed to see which deals with the focus. But catch the belief part. Because he has the right focus, he has the second fundamental, and that is the right fervor. And the reason he could fight was because he had focus and fervor. You ever wondered how could David, who got five smooth rocks in 1 Samuel 17 to face Goliath, use one? And I think the reason he knocked him out is because he learned how to fight with focus. You ever, he hit the rock. I know God was behind it, but he used one rock in the right direction. I'm saying he had even the fervor to fight. He says, I, I would have fainted unless I had belief. Here it is. You, you don't get fervor if you don't have belief. And somewhere from 2020 to 2021, somebody stopped believing God. And you got all in your feelings and you lost your focus, but you lost your focus and you also lost your fight. And you lost your fight because you lost your focus and because you lost your fervor. Fervor is nothing more than intense passion. I talked to you about passion a couple of weeks ago. If you missed it, go back and, and catch that message. But fervor is intense and passionate feeling. I like a, a, a more elaborate definition. It goes like this. It's a warm and steady motion. Good God. It's enthusiasm. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. David says, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord, which speaks to his focus, but it also speaks to his fervor. He had that intense that intensity about him and that, that steady motion. Now, I'm going to say something to some of you all, and it'll tell me how old you are if you can finish the fill in the blank. Rock. Okay, somebody. <laughs> David said, I didn't always feel like it, but, but I just kept on rocking steady. Yeah. He says, I just kept on keeping on. Okay. He says, I would have fainted, but I believed, and because I believed, my belief led to action. My belief led to my fervor. My belief led to my steady motion. He kept going. You know, it was a long time, 13 to 15 years before he got to the palace after he was anointed. But when you saw David, one thing you can say about David, he didn't do everything perfect. He had an issue with lust. But one thing you can say about David is David, not only did he fight, but he fought with fervor. He had passion, and he was also intense, but he was also steadily emotional. In other words, David wasn't stagnant. He only got stagnant that I saw for a little while. In Psalm, in 1 Samuel 30, when Ziklag is burned up, from verse 1 through 5, he's stagnant. He's bawling his eyes out because he thinks his wives and his children are dead and his men talk about stoning him. And while everybody's in their feelings, David came back to focus. Verse 6 says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And so he got up. He stopped having a pity party. And I think he had a praise party and started saying things like, God brought me too far for me to get in my feelings. And he didn't focus on the people. He focused on God and said, God, shall I pursue or shall I leave this alone? Shall I cut my losses or do you still have a promise for me? And God told him, pursue. Guess what? He got himself together and he focused not on the threat, not on what he lost, but he focused on what God had left for him. And he got himself up with fervor. And guess what happened? When he leaders, men, hear me, women of God who lead, when he got himself together, 600 men who talked about stoning him got right back in line to follow him because he started walking with fervor. Don't nobody want to follow you if you stay in your feelings, but if you have some fervor and some fire and some focus, somebody will follow you. It may not be a lot, but if there's one or two God gives you, you better come show up with fervor. The reason you didn't get that promotion wasn't because you didn't know what you were doing. You, everybody know you in your feelings. Everybody know you don't have no fervor, but Folk want to see folk who have passion about what God told them to do and enough faith to believe it so that you have the fervor to keep rocking steady. Are you steady? Or have you allowed 
yourself to stumble? Are you still believing God for the promise? Or have you fainted in your mind to say, I forfeit, maybe God has something else? Here's what I want to share with you. Download number two. You have to keep going to keep going. Okay, okay, David. David says, I wanted to faint, but the reason I didn't faint and the reason I didn't fall to the reason I didn't fall is that I kept believing to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He says, I, I wasn't just believing to get blessed when I get to heaven. I believe the same God who was going to bless me in heaven can bless me right here on the earth. He doesn't have to wait for me to die to get all of my reward. Some of the blessing I'm going to get is by me being faithful and not me walking in my feelings. It's me being focused and me having fervor. And sometimes I'm trying to tell you, you're tired, but get this. Don't stop turning the wheels. Sometimes, download number two, you have to keep going to keep going. Some of you, let me help you. Your routine has blessed you. What the enemy's tried to do is distract you and derail you from your focus. You've been getting up working on your promise for years. Don't let now that you may have to work on it virtually cause you to stop moving in the direction God has called you. Keep your fervor so you're going to need it so you don't faint. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. Sometimes in order to keep going, you just got to keep going. Can I get a witness? Let me just do a check. How many of you every Monday morning when your alarm clock goes off, you feel like getting up? Come on, let me see your hand. Come on, ain't no mind. Okay. You want extra sleep. But the reason you get up is because you have a focus on a paycheck, a focus on providing for family. You have the fervor, perhaps, hopefully, that you have a passion for what God has called your hands to do. And so sometimes, get this, as much as I even love preaching, I don't always feel like preaching. But you know what I've been doing for the last 25 years as a pastor and 27 years as a preacher, I just keep going. I know when Saturday comes, Sunday's around the corner. I don't know nothing else to do, Brother Jeff, Minister Jeff, but to come to church on Sunday, whether I'm preaching or not, because I know if I keep going, I'm going to keep going. What happens is too many times we get stagnant and we get stale. We don't move our muscles, and if you start to get older, I start hearing things pop. That's why I believe I got to get back to practice lifting a little weight. I got to get back to moving my limbs so that I don't get stale and I don't get in a place to where I'm stagnant. But when you begin to understand that life is to be lived, it'll help you with your fervor. Help me preach and tell your neighbor, keep going. I know it don't look like the promise is coming your way, but keep going. I know it don't look like you're going to get that new assignment, but keep filling out those applications. I know you can cook clean and you're mighty fine and you ain't got your bow ass yet. Just keep going. Keep coming to church. Keep praying to God. Keep seeking his face so that he will give you what he has for you. And if nothing else, David says, one thing have I desired, that will I seek, that I may pursue you and be in your house. He says, I don't want to just come by. I want to stay. I want to live in fervor with passion. Here's what I want to share with you as well. Download number three. Sometimes your passion will help you with your patience. David said, wait on the Lord. That's the problem. So even when we fix our focus, guess what happens? We sometimes still want to faint because even if we fix our focus, our fervor gets frustrated because we lack patience. But here's the next download I want to share with you. Sometimes your patience, your passion rather, will help you with your patience. Mm. Can I just, can I be real with you for half a second or two? Folk wondering, with all your flaws and all your failures, why that good woman keeps staying with a not so good man? It's because her passion helps with her patience. Okay, okay. So here's what David and I are saying. David says, I would have fainted. He's not just saying one day. He's literally saying, as I understand the text, throughout all God has brought me through. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. He says, I kept on going. 
And I learned how to wait. That's for, therefore, he shifts the conversation from him to those who would read. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Here's what he's saying. I think I hear clearly. He's saying sometimes your passion will help you with your patience. Have you ever wanted something from God so bad? That you were willing to wait and not worry when it looked like your promise was in layaway. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. God will ignite your fervor, give you passion to help you with patience. Because when you have the right focus, you know if God promised, he can, say it with me, provide. Okay, come on. And, and since he can provide, now I just got to let him guide me unto his timing and not mine. Have you ever wanted something so bad, but it was taking so long that you wanted to quit and faint? But the reason you didn't faint was that your passion had you too invested that it help you remain patient. That's what I was talking about in that illustration. Nobody here, of course. But the reason that that sister uh, is patient because she's got passion. She said, I've been working on Freddie for 18 years. I ain't going to fix him up just to give him to some. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> How many of you, maybe you can't relate to that. How many of you are like Pastor James? And, and you know, the restaurateurs, they know what they're doing. They built an extra window. You know why? Because they understand if you have passion, you'll have patience. So they make you pay first. Because if you have a special order, Pastor Ricky Rush wrote a book, you know, about that. You, you got to wait. And so it frustrates me sometimes when I give them my money first and then I got to wait in line for my meal. But the only reason I don't get out of line, Brother Herb, is I have a passion for my plate. And God forbid, I've already paid. David is saying, I've invested too much for the promise not to get the promise. Uh, I, even in my own life, there's some days when, when I want to quit, I would have fainted, but I realized, wait a minute, I've been waiting in line too long. And, and if I keep waiting in line, I know this, sooner or later, it's going to be my time. So my passion helps me with my Patience. Let me, let me give you an example. I was, I was sharing with the praise team at practice the other night. I said, man, I was just mad. I had to do some other people's job for them. And so uh, I was driving down the highway here in Texas and hit a pothole. I just bought four new tires about a month ago. But I hit this big pothole I couldn't avoid. And, and what happened was not only did it put a bubble on my tire, but it, it dipped my rim. And my still somewhat new car. So I was mad, y'all. And so I went to get my tire replaced. I had it under warranty. They replaced the tire, but they did not replace the rim because it wasn't under warranty. So I started calling my dealership. And, you know, they wanted to charge me. I know you know, First Lady, because I told you. They wanted to charge me a lot of money. I'm not going to give you the amount for one wheel. So then I started talking to the people at the shop. They said, you know what? I know you're not thinking about it. But we got some rims we can get you that if you, for a little more dollars, a few more dollars, we can get you four new rims, what you're going to pay for one new rim. So I did. Now, all of a sudden, I'm thinking about rims. I wasn't thinking about rims. Now, I'm seeing all the rims I'm going to get. They said, Mr. James, they'll be here in three to five days. Guess what happened? They didn't show up in three to five days. So I start calling them. And when I called them, they didn't answer. They kept telling me, they will be here later. And finally, when I talked to them, they told me, the model you want has been discontinued. So now I got to choose another model. Mm -hmm. another three to five days. But what happened was it took longer than three to five days. But you know what I did? I start because they say, we'll call you when they come. Last time they didn't call, I had to call them. So I call them every day until God start talking to me. I said, wait a minute, God, something going on, something going on, something going on. I said, God, why is this bothering me? I wasn't even thinking about this. He, he, says, he says, I want to show you that I still want to work on your patience. 
Philadelphia because I got impatient. And so when I finally had the passion, I started looking at the rims that looked like the ones I was going to get. I said, oh, they car look good. Thank God for them. And finally, I just said, you know what? They're going to get here when they get here. And little to my surprise, they showed up and I got them sooner than I thought. Right on schedule. My point being was that my passion helped me with my... Because when you have a promise from the Lord, it don't always come fast. But your passion will help you with your patience. I'm almost finished, but I got to share one more testimony. Because every time I, I look at my, my wife, she's a sign that I had some help with my patience because of my passion. I had so much passion for her that even before we start dating again, I stopped dating anybody because God gave me the patience to wait for what he told me was my promise. And every time I look over, I get scared. Oh, God, you did that? Good God, what you going to do next? <laughs> when you have a promise, you have to patiently, that's what he says, wait for it. And when you wait, not just sit down and wait, but when you get passionate and you have the, the fiber and the fervor for what God is calling you to do, time will fly by. Are you hearing me? Here's what I want you to know. Proverbs 23, 18 says, you will be rewarded for this. Talking about patience and hope. Your hope will not be disappointed. And the reason some of us faint and we don't keep walking with fervor like David is because we faint because we don't believe God's going to deliver on the promise. But if you don't hear anything else, hear me. God will reward you for this patient endurance, this patient hope for the promise that God wants to provide in your life. Are you hearing me? So God, when he begins to work with us, he causes us to walk with patience. Uh, the Bible says it like this in Romans 12, 12 through 13, rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always eager to practice hospitality. He's saying you got to rejoice in confident hope because God, he rewards your patience when you and I have patience in him. When we have patience, the Bible says it like this, related to the father of faith who had to deal with patience and a promise. Hebrews 6.15, then Abraham waited patiently and he received what God had promised, okay? Uh, Isaiah would say it like this to us. You know it, 40 and 28 through 31. Have you never heard? Have you never understood, New Living Translation? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weary or weak. No one can measure the depths of his understanding, here it is, 29. He gives power to the weak and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will become weak. He says this fainting thing has nothing to do with age because you can get tired at a young age and you can get tired at an old age and you can get tired at middle age. But even youth will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust or wait in the Lord will find, I love this part, new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk, here it is, and not faint. I got a prophetic word for five of y'all or more watching. God's getting ready to give us some new strength. We've got new problems, new delta variants of a pandemic, but I believe God's getting ready to give us some new strength. You've got new budgets you got to work through. You've got new family challenges, but I believe that God's going to give us some new strength. He promised he was going to give us new strength. He promised he was never going to leave us. He promised he was always going to provide. That's good news to realize that you don't have to faint because we have a promise from the Lord. And so I'm going to have faith not to faint because uh, the first fundamental I realize to standing in faith and not fainting is that I got to fix my focus. Number two, I got to have fervor. But here it is. Number three, look at the text. 
Verse number one, he says, 27, number of Psalms, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Then he asks himself a question. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people, verse two, come to devour me, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. Okay. Uh, fundamental number three, after focus and fervor, David is simply sharing with us the third fundamental, and that is simply fearlessness. Yeah. He says, I got a promise I'm getting tired, but I ain't scared. Come on, help me preach somebody. Do you have a promise? And are you getting tired, but you're not scared? You understand that 1 John 4, greater is he that is in me. I'm tired. I've got a promise, but I'm not scared. I walk with him too long that he's given me patience and endurance so that after I've suffered a little while, he'll establish me. He'll settle me. He'll strengthen me. And so since he He's going to do that. I might as well keep running after God and his promise because he lets us know you got to be fearless. He says, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. My focus and believe to have fervor, but I also got to let you know I'm fearless. He says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He's simply saying, let me translate with my Oak Cliff lexicon. He says, don't be scared. He says, you got to understand that when you walk with God, God wants you to have the kind of confident hope in him to where you are not fearful, but but you are fearless. And I just want to know, do I have anyone in here who still believes God for a promise to where you have a focus and faith and you still believe God enough to have your fervor, your passion, and your rocking steady, but you're saying, I'm doing it and I'm not afraid. I know there's danger all around me. I'm not wearing this mask because I'm afraid. I'm wearing this mask because I'm wise. But truth be known, I'm still believing God for his promise of deliverance. Truth be known that he even if I have enemies that come around me, my God is bigger and better than any enemy. And if I have a promise from the Lord, God knows how to pay for what he promises. That's the word for someone. You just got to be fearless. Help me preach. Tell your neighbor, don't be scared. Mm -mm. He says, the Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. Then he asked himself a question. You ever ask yourself a question? So why? Should I tremble? Why am I afraid? Here's why we get afraid. We, we get afraid because we drift instead of draw. <laughs> we drift to our own thinking. Instead of doing what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. We drift to our own understanding and said, that thing took out my mama. And since it took out my mama, it's going to take me out. No, you got to be fearless and say, if the generational curse stops with me, then so be it. I believe, God, you're going to do it. You got to be fearless, not in, your, not in who you are, but in who your God is. David is not saying, and he's not boasting about how bad he is. He's boasting. In the, that's what he said in Psalm 37. My boast shall be in the Lord. The humble share here thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify. He says, I just need a few fearless, faithful folk to magnify the Lord with me so we can exalt his name together. I need you to understand that when you follow God, you draw nigh to him. He'll cause you to walk in faith to where you're fearless. Okay, let me slow it down. You fear less. Come on, come on, come on. I ain't saying sometimes the thought runs across my mind that I could get sick or the thought runs across my mind that God ain't going to bless me or the thought comes across my mind that, that the promise is taking longer than I thought and it ain't going to come to pass. No, the longer I walk with him and I keep rocking steady, the more I fear less. <laughs> 
Here's what I want you to know. Download number four, last one. There is no fear when God is near. That's all I'm trying to tell you. James would say it like this in chapter four, seven going into eight. Draw, not drift, draw nigh unto God, and God will draw nigh unto you. You ain't got to be scared. You just got to draw near. That's why when enemies attack me, I go to the throne. I say, Father, I need you. I can't handle this. Father, I need you. I don't have the help I think I need. Father, I need you. I don't have the answer, but I still believe you have a promise, and I don't want to faint. I believe, God, you will keep me in perfect peace. Isaiah 26 and 3, as long as I keep my mind stayed on thee. But here's why we, we drift. Instead of draw, we walk after our own mind. Isaiah says it like this, and I'm almost finished. Give me five minutes or less. Isaiah 30 and 15, this is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. Here it is. Only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. Oh, it's a life verse now. In quietness and confidence is your strength. Oh, that's good news. He says, you ain't got to be afraid. You ain't got to be scared. You just got to return to me. But, but the last part, we always quote that first part. The last part of the verse says to Israel, but you would not have it. He's simply saying, instead of drawing, you begin to drift. You would not have it. I promised you that you could walk in peace, but you would not have it. How many of you have been forfeiting your peace about to faint because you would not have it? God said, return to me. You made every excuse in the book. You blame the church on being phony. And God says, it ain't the church. It's me trying to get your attention. Yeah, there's some work that needs to be done in all our churches, but the church is made of imperfect people. And if you stop focusing on the people and focus on me and my promise, you'll understand that you're not perfect like they're not perfect. But we're all being perfected in confidence and quietness. Sometimes David would say it like this. I've been walking with God so good. Sometimes when God does what he does, I ain't got to say nothing. I just show up. Sometimes the, the strong, see, oftentimes, how many of you ever been like me from Oak Cliff and you've seen a fight, maybe been in a few fights back in the day? And the person who does all the talking, most of the time, they can't fight. They're trying to scare you like the enemy threaten you, but a joker who can really fight, they don't say nothing. They just swing. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't be hitting nobody this week. My point is simply this. You got to be quiet and confident in the promise and the provision and the plan that God has for your life. This is not the time to freak out. This is the time not to faint. Why? Because you're fearless. You are confident that if God said it, that settles it. You're fearless and you understand that I have no reason to fear because the Lord is my light and my salvation. Ain't nobody bigger than God. Ain't nobody better than God. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm fearless, and I fear less because God is still on the throne. I still have a promise from the Lord. Confidence looks like this. Job said it like this in Job 19, 25. But as for me, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he will stand upon the earth at last. And after my body has decayed, yet in my body will I see God. He says, I'm going through but I know God is not through. He was confident. Daniel 3.17, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those three bad Hebrew boys, said to King Nebuchadnezzar, even if you throw us in the fire, this is the kind of confidence we have, that even if our God, we're fearless, put us in the fire, our faith says that even if our God doesn't deliver us from the fire, he's big enough and bad enough to deliver us in the fire. He He'll come in, and you know the story. They threw in three. He said, I thought we threw in three. I see four, and one of them looked like the Son of God. That's the kind of promise God will provide when you keep walking and not fainting, when you keep understanding that God is on my side. And even though I have enemies against me, get this, if God is for me, it don't matter who's against me. Okay, I'm finished. But you got to know, it doesn't matter who's against you. What bill collector, what 
boss, what ex-spouse, what lawyer, if God, what governor, if God, what situation, if God, what pandemic, if God, what economy, if God, what sickness, if God, what family drama, if God, who am I talking to? You're trying to faint. God says, this ain't the time to faint. This is the time to walk in faith. Trust me right where you are. Trust me till you feel better. Trust me until you have faith enough not to faint but to stand. Having done all to stand. Stand. I'm, I better stop because I feel like preaching. I told you, I don't always feel like it, but every now and then, when I think of his goodness, I feel like telling the story. Every now and then, when I realize I would have fainted when I got divorce papers, but I believe to see every now and then when I cried taking my children to school, I look back and see God was faithful. And every promise Every promise. Do you have a promise? My time is up. Confidence. Confidence says it looks like a woman in Mark 5, 25, 28, who has an issue of blood for 12 years. But the text says she fought within herself. One version says she spoke within herself confidence. Here's what she said. I know I've been bleeding for 12 years. Here's what she said. I heard he's a promise maker. And if I could just touch, I spent all my money, but here's what she said. If I can just touch, touch the hem of his garment. He ain't got to touch me. I, if I could just touch something that's touching him, Okay, come on, somebody just give him some praise. If you got a promise, just give him some praise. Ah, God, if you've been going through trouble, but you got a promise, if you've been in your feelings, come on, get in your faith. Praise him on credit. Come on, get in your faith. Thank him on credit. Come on and get in your faith. Love on credit. Come on and get in your faith. Shout on credit. Come on and get in your faith. Act like it's already done. Praise like it's already done. Walk like you got a promise. Talk like you got a promise. Act like you got a promise. Lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. Oh, keep them up. Keep on. Keep it on. Keep on. Give them in praise. Keep on. Y'all gonna fool around. Let me get in shape. Paul would say, here's confidence. Romans 8, 38. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons. Let me pause. Let me help you preach this. If you ever want to preach, stay with the word. <laughs> nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. No internet drop. No late starts. No empty sanctuaries. Good God. I, <sighs> No marriage on the rocks. No sick child. Nothing. No pink slips. Nothing. Not your situation. Not your lack of education. Can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, I'm just trying to tell you. My final thought is what I think David was saying. I want to leave you with. It's simply this. God's got me. I've been afraid sometimes, 
but now I fear less. Why? God's got me. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some mountains to maneuver, but I won't complain. Why? God's got me. I may have lost some resources, but I did not lose my main source. Why? Because God's got me. You may have some problems in your marriage, but that doesn't mean that that marriage is dissolved. Why? God's got you. Stop complaining and start partnering with God. Pray. Why? God's got you. David said, I would have fainted, but I realized God's got me. I realized his hand was on me. I realized he had a promise for me. And more than the promise, that's why I love verse 4. He says, I desire one thing, to be in the presence of the Lord, to live, to dwell, not just come one time, but to consist of all near unto God. All he's saying is that God's got me. Since God's got you, you ought to get God. Ask him to come into your heart. I was just planning to talk to you for a few minutes and sit on down, but I, I felt real good today. I, I felt like I needed to tell somebody, God's got you. Get this. You may have COVID, but God's got you. Mm -hmm. You may have a layoff, but God's got you. He'll lay you on. You may have problems, but God is a problem solver. Type in the chat, God's got me. The next time, I'm trying to finish, give me half a minute. The next time they ask you why you still praising, why you still smiling, why you still singing on your way to work, whistling instead of whining, just tell them, type it in the chat, God's got me. I wish I could have explained it. I explained it, but I wish I could have just said that. I was walking to work one day, and the lady in HR said, why are you singing and whistling? I said, because it's a good day to be alive. But if I would rewind and go back, I would just simply say, God's got me. I didn't bring myself here, and I ain't going to leave until he lets me go. And if God closes the door, just know he's got you. Whew. I've been going through transition the last six months, uh, ministry, marketplace, family, but I came to tell Pastor James, God's got you. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. He's got you. And he's got you because he's for you. And if he's got you because he's for you, he's always going to be with you. He's just waiting on you to draw nigh. He's waiting on you to come to your senses and realize you can't fight them enemies by yourself, especially if you are all in your feelings. Cast your feelings to the Lord. Sometimes I tell God, God, I don't like it. It don't feel good. But you got to fix me and my feelings so I get the right focus. I have my fervor, and I'm fearless. It ain't going to happen to me. You got to watch. I had to watch something because I got a little, I was afraid. I was just intensely concerned. I had to get some medication from my physician. First lady knew I had it for about three weeks because she kept me focused on the side effects. And if you watch, you ever watch those commercials with that long name? It could call you to work, but it could cause your arm to fall off, your heart to stop at three o'clock in the morning. It could cause one ear. And if you focus on the side effects, you won't get the fix you, okay, you need. And so when I shifted off of the side effects and looked at what the promise of me getting better was, okay, okay, all I'm trying to tell you is for some of you, the devil has been trying to distract you with the side effects. Ain't nobody preaching the real word. Ain't nobody really love God. All the folk at the church are hypocrites. Well, the devil is a lie. We have a few side effects. We have a few folk who preach just for money. We have a few folk who come to church just to find the honeys. But there are a few of us who said, like David, I would have fainted. Woo! But one day, I believed. One day, I tasted it. One day, I realized Jesus is real. So if that's you, don't get hung up on the side effects. All the preacher wants is your money. No, a real preacher is wanting to do ministry. Don't get hooked up on the side effects. But I'm closing by letting you know there's a benefit and a blessing to walking with God. If you walk with God, 
David and others of us will tell you, God will walk with you. He'll keep you sane in an unsane world. He'll give you peace in a world that's filled with political issues that tries to divide even in the church. He'll give you peace in spite of your problems. Hear me. The one thing that I wish I could do for 27 years of preaching, going on 25 years of pastoring, I wish I could just open up your head and your heart and, and let you get it poured in so you can experience it. But the best I could do is to do what Romans 10, 17 says, preach because I am a preacher so that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You've heard the word. God promised in his word that he would never leave you nor forsake you. David knew what it was like. I always wondered why even when it came to Ziklag in 1 Samuel 30, David had 600 men. But when God gave him the word to go recover everything that they lost and to also recruit the plunder, only 400 men went with him. The reason that only 400 men went with him was that 200 stayed behind. And the Bible says the reason that they stayed behind was that they were so faint. They thought their loved ones were dead. They thought the children were gone. And you know, sometimes life hits us so hard, it takes more out of us than we know. And they said, we don't mind staying with the stuff, but we can't go. I can't fight. I can't fight another battle. And the 400 that went with David, they said, after they got everything back, they said, just give them their families back, but don't give them any of the plunder because they didn't go. David said, no, they're with us. We're going to give them not only their families, but we're going to give them a piece of everything, too, because they stayed and watched stuff. I think the moral of the message was simply this. He understood that I would have fainted. See, before we turn our nose down on folk who we say are soft because they take a pause or because they're not as strong as you, you got to understand, all of us, if we were honest, have gone through moments from the pulpit to the last pew where we wanted to quit when we wanted to throw in the towel. And if it had not been for God's grace, David said, no, I'll give them something too. Because it took grace just to stay here. If you're watching and you're in that place, maybe you're not in the, the 400 that went with David. Maybe you're part of the 200. You say, I can't do, I can't take nothing. If one more phone call, if one more email, one more text message, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you. Go honestly to God. First of all, if you've never surrendered your life to him because of the side effects, hear me. God wants you to be in relationship with him. Not religion, but relationship. So bow with me. I believe God's talking to somebody now. You should see a connect link come up. If not, pray this prayer with me right now. Dear God, Pastor James was talking to me. I've been looking at all the side effects of folks who needed to grow deeper in you. And I made the assumption that that's what the whole church was and all religion you were about. But I come today, God, believing that I can have a relationship with you. So I ask that you take me with my faults. I ask that you take me with my flaws and forgive me of my sins so that I could be in right standing, i.e. righteousness with you. I do believe with my heart. And now, say it out loud with me, I confess with my heart that you, God, raised Jesus from the dead. And that enables me to be saved. Thank you for saving me. Grow me. Put me in a church where I can be planted. Put me in your word first so that I can be planted, so that I fear less in Jesus name if you prayed that prayer I we believe you got saved but don't just stop there maybe you're watching and you don't have a church home you don't have a family of faith we're not perfect but we are people who love God love one another and are being perfected you should see a slide pop up on the screen 
If you want to be a member of our church, just send us an email to info at thetransparentchurch.org and just type in the subject line membership. We'll set up a virtual congress, a virtual new member orientation for you. And if you're watching on our new website, you can just go to the connect tab. Click there and you can just fill in your information. We will get the email directly. Prayer request there is as well. I want to pray one last prayer. I know I'm, o- I'm almost there. While I'm, I'm praying, I want you to prepare your hearts. For those of you who say this word was for me, let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for every tired saint who loves you, loves their family, loves their assignment, but just downright tired. They're about to faint, God. I pray, God, that their faith enables them not to faint. Strengthen us in the faith so that we can stand in the fight and receive the relationship with you and the promises that shall be revealed, not just in the sweet by and by, but here in the land of the living. Meet everyone at their, the point of their need. Be courage to wait and to watch your work in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This is the first Sunday of the month, so if you just give me just another minute or two. We do what the Word reminds us to do. We commune, so this is our communion day. So while I get ready to share the word of the Lord, brief scripture, go ahead and grab your communion supplies. If you don't have them, come on up with me, First Lady. We're moving expeditiously. Thank you, Jesus. You can keep playing that for me, sir. It has become our custom to celebrate communion. When you look at that word communion in the Greek, it's a word that means, it's first of all the word koinonia. It literally means the most intense fellowship that one could have. And as we do our job right in following God with passion, purpose, fervor, focus, and fearlessness, he begins to restore us. And so perhaps you've been watching this and you're the person since the last time we communed you committed a sin or you got entangled in a situation and you've not had communion with God this is a good time just to pause and pray I want to read for you this passage of scripture that we read on in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 through 28 and then we're going to serve communion but I want you to consider asking God to do what only God can do 1 Corinthians 11, 23 says, For I pass on to you what I receive from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread. He gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. 28, which is where we'll stop. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. I like to call this examination time not where we look at our neighbor or our pastor, first lady, or our spouse or children, but we go to God. I'm going to pray real quick corporately, and I want you to do so. Ask God to wash you, cleanse you, bring you back into fellowship. Here's the thing. I know some of you heard me say this before, but perhaps you're watching and you haven't heard this. The reason that we get to have communion, it is not in how good we are. It's in how good God has been. The only thing that qualifies us to partake in communion is the fact that we believe and accept and confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. 
can't work to get it. Ephesians 2, 8 says that it is by grace that we are saved through faith so that none of us can boast. So don't, don't think less of yourself because you're not on the praise team or preaching or you've not been in church long. That doesn't qualify you. What qualifies you to sit at the table is that you're a son or a daughter of the Lord. And what enables you to do that is by giving your heart to him. There's nothing you, can, you and I can do to earn salvation. But because we are sons, see, we have relationship, just like many our natural relationships, we have to, from time to time, bring back the fellowship. So let's pray about that now. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the worship that has gone forth. I thank you, God, for the ability and the mind to commune together, to remember the most gracious act of love and sacrifice that was ever portrayed to mankind. We come now, I ask that you would forgive me and forgive us of anything that we've done in the form of sin or anything contrary to your will so that, God, we could remain in fellowship with you. Thank you for saving us and thank you for bringing us onto the right path. Restore our joy. Restore, God, our peace. Now I ask that you bless the bread so that as we eat it, as it symbolizes your body that was bruised for us, let it give strength so that we don't faint, but we stand in faith. Bless the cup and the contents thereof so that as we drink, it leads to our healing and our wholeness. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Now I'm going to ask that you get the wafer or cracker, whatever you have in your hand, your right hand, and lift it. It'll be my sign that we're ready to commune. I see you, virtual congregation. Amen. Thank you for being with us. And on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he and his disciples did what we're about to do. They all did, first of all, eat together. So now let us eat together. I'll take the cup and lift it over your head, signifying we've been covered under the blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So in the same way that they ate, they also did drink. So now let us drink together. Amen. Amen. And amen. We're getting ready to go, but before we do, we want to worship this first Sunday and giving our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. So we made it easy for you to do so. We have four ways that you can give. First of all, if you're watching through the website, you can hover over the screen and you can see the click of the, the give icon at the top, or you can click the give tab and give securely there as well. If you're watching via the TC app, Transparent Church app, you can also give by uh, clicking the give button on the app, the app securely. We've also made it possible for you to give via text by simply texting the letters TCGIVER. That's TC Giver to the number 888-364-4483. And you can give securely there as well. And fourth and finally, you can put a check made payable to the Transparent Church in an envelope, seal it, and mail it with a stamp on it to the Transparent Church. P.O. Box 540-273, Grand Prairie, Texas, 75054. Thank you for giving. Some of you have already given in advance like we do here. We've also made it easy for you. If you want to do a reoccurring gift so that you'll, you want to automate what's important to you, you can do that on our website as well and through either, the, uh, through either of the other mediums as well. God bless you. First Lady, would you greet the people? Greetings, transparent and guests and friends. Just so glad to have you with us here on this first Sunday in the month of August. It's the eighth month in this 12-month year. And so I just want to remind us all, like Pastor said, we need to get focused, and that's me included. Just glad to share in the fellowship with you, and so glad that we're in the beloved through Christ Jesus. Have an awesome week. Revisit the word. Revisit the um, site. I believe that this word will bless you Whew. over and over and over and over again. Have a wonderful week, Transparent. Thank you, dear. All right, lift those tithes and those offerings up. Let me say thank you to our virtual ushers out there, our virtual congregation. Thank you to our media team, our video crew, praise team, and singers. God bless you all, band.
Let's pray. Father, we thank you for every dime and dollar that's given to this ministry to own, to, for the ongoing of your kingdom. We pray that you allow us to establish and fulfill the mission and vision that you've called us to. Grow and groom us according to your will and your plan. In Jesus' name, help us this week and the rest of our lives to have the faith not to faint. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.